Hey everybody, this is going to be a very quick tutorial and it's actually kind of an addendum to one I already did on bin views and customizing those and I'll put the link here if you haven't already watched that one. In the comments for that one I got a question about something that actually I realized I probably should have put in there so going ahead and just recording this as a separate one quickly and this is about doing a default bin view. So we talked about customizing bin views and all the different options you have here but the question that came up is well what if when i have a bin open i don't want it to always default to whatever the avid default was i want it to go to the custom view that i made and there is a way to do that it has a couple of limitations but it's essentially what this person was asking for so i'll pull up my settings command comma on a mac and i'm going to click over to the user tab and you can see here under bin view it shows all the different bin views i have the default ones which you can edit and tweak how you want and then also some that you can create your own so i have one that i've made called check source info and i'm actually going to click right above these where it actually says bin so i want to look at my bin settings there's a whole bunch of useful settings here one i do want to highlight is enable edit from bin splice overwrite this is one i really like it means if i have a clip in my bin and i just want to edit it into my sequence without having to load it in the source monitor first i can have it highlighted in the bin and just hit b for overwrite or v for insert and get it right in there without even bringing it into the source monitor now a lot of the time you probably do want to bring it up and find your in out point or review the clip or whatever but sometimes i have a clip I'm like i just want to string some things together and this is a quick way to do it in fact, if I have a bin full of clips and I want to just sort of string them all out into a sequence, I can highlight all of them, press B, and just going to overwrite them all in a row right into the sequence. It'll use the in-out points that are already there if they're set. If they're not set, it's a little trickier. It'll either use the whole clip if the last time you had the clip open, the playhead was at the beginning. If it's not, it'll use where the playhead was as one of the markers anyway. That's a useful thing. What I was actually going to show you here is down here at the bottom where it says set default bin view. You can see here, I have all my different bin options. Again, the default ones that exist already, and then some other ones that I've created myself. And here I've made that custom one, check source info into my default bin view. Close that, close my settings. And you'll notice my bins don't all just automatically switch into that view. That's not what it means by a default view in here. In fact, here's this bin outside media. I'm gonna close it and I'll reopen it. And it doesn't even mean it opens with that. It opens in the same bin view it had last time, which in this case was editing. And the same is true if I have something that's set into that bin view I created, check source info, I can close this bin now and open it back up and it'll come back again. So each individual bin will come back wherever you had it last. What the default bin view does is it changes what new bins default to. So if I go up here and say new bin, or you could just command N, create a new bin, and you can see by default it comes in already in that check source info view. So whatever your default bin view is, every time you create a new bin in your project, it will show up with that. And remember, this is tied to your user settings, not your project settings. So even if I were to open another project, as long as I'm using my same user profile, every new bin will be created with this as the default. And of course, I can always change it and use a different bin view for this bin if I want, but it's going to default to open with that one I created. Okay, so that's the idea of the default bin view. Something I do think would be nice, and I know from the Avid forum, some other people have commented about this too, is if you could set different default bin views for different workspaces. So for instance, if I'm in my edit workspace, I might want the bins to look one way. If I was in the coloring workspace, maybe I want them to look another way. I think in particular, if you were creating some of your own workspaces, maybe you have one for logging footage and a different workspace for actually doing your editing. And it might make a lot of sense to have different default bin views for those. Unfortunately, that's not the way it is set up. It's one default bin view for your user profile. But anyway, that's what it does. Hopefully that is helpful to some of you. It's not necessarily gonna do a whole lot of good on existing projects where you may already have your bins created and such. You still have to go change them all. But if you're starting new projects, once you've set that up, your bins will auto be created that way. And that can just save you a little bit of time instead of having to change your bin views for each new bin. Hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.